Hi, Tim Ard here. Welcome to this edition of Along the Forest Apps Road. This edition is kind of a Tim's tips. Recently, I had some questions about uh, notches. I had mentioned about the slide notch in one of the videos. I had two or three questions about it, and also uh, a little discussion about how a notch should be formed. Put together a compilation off of uh, several of the other videos, giving you some pictures that you can kind of look at. And so we're going to discuss in this episode about uh, what is a notch and how does it work. If you've ever wanted to know anything about a notch without considering technique, technique would be picking uh, from what some call a common notch, standard, or Humboldt, or box notch, or a bird's mouth, or a deep V, or an open face, or a slide notch, or a face cut, or a straight cut, or a match cut, or a scarf, or a bait, or an undercut, or a pie. I've heard called all of those, and uh, they all describe one thing, and that's a notch. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to explain to you all these versions of the names of face cuts, and that would be better done probably live in a question or answer session. Maybe we'll do something online with that. But I, I really, it's simply to describe a notch. What is a notch? What the notch is, is the real ability to plan and control your results in cutting trees or limbing and bucking. So that's really what I want to talk about uh, in this session. Whatever you want to call it, it's what it does that really matters. Can you really explain it if someone was to ask? That's the key. I think a lot of times most of us just do it. We don't really think about it and not thinking what a notch should or could do and maybe not getting expected results because of this understanding. Because trees and limbs grow in circles, without a notch, you'll always get splitting of the fiber or possibly even a barber's chair, but definitely increases chances of loss of control. What happens if you don't use a notch with hinge? Trees grow in circles. Every year they add a growth ring to increase the base, add stability, but because of this growing in circles, maintain flexibility. If there is not a notch of some type, fiber pressure is forced to split at the radius of the rings. We see this sometimes in bucking logs and limbs and don't seem to understand why. Well, there is a reason. It simply allows a hinge or holding wood fiber to work. When the notch closes, the hinge will be broken. It gives a place for the hinge to fold into without resistance. And it does really kind of set the direction of the tree, just as a hinge on the door allows the door to close exactly to the latch, the notch and the hinge controls the tree to fall to target. How open should it be? Critical factors in the opening of the notch are loss of control, splitting, and barber's chair. If the notch opening is too narrow, the hinge can, can't break from the back to the front. I've compiled some video of a few notch uses you might consider using in your tree work. Controlling direction and leans, lowering logs or limbs, Reducing pinch and twist in storm debris. Removing of hung trees and limbs. Some notch considerations. Make sure there's no bypass or Dutchman at the back corner of the notch. The notch opening should be enough to allow movement of the stem or log to your desired resting position. 
If the tree has side or back lean, it can affect your control. The notch is aimed to offset the side lean. If the canopy has a five foot offset to one side, then you simply place the notch five in the other direction set. The direction is set by first the information on leans that you take in your plan. If the tree has side or back lean, it can affect your control. The notch is aimed to offset the side lean. If the canopy has a five foot offset to one side, then you simply place the notch five in the other direction to hit the target area. So you turn the hinge to face the target with an offset of the side lean. If the tree has back lean, you have to make sure the opening of the notch is wide enough to allow hinge movement until the tree has reached a position of about 30 degrees off the ground to eliminate butt rebound and splitting. That's when the tree slides backwards because it hits because its center weight of the falling stem attempts to find its center point. So the tree base tries to come behind the stump and can come into your escape area. If the notch opening is too narrow, the hinge can't break from the back to the front. This causes pulled fiber or splitting at the back of the hinge and possibly breaking the hinge and or splitting the tree at the hinge. When the hinge breaks, control is lost. And sometimes safety can be compromised also if the operator is in the wrong position or can't retreat fast enough. Considering the movement needed, the knot should be 45 to 90 degrees in opening. I usually consider 70 degrees at least to allow the hinge to work the tree or limb to the target site. I guess my thoughts are, why would you want to stop the movement halfway to where you want it to go? If less than 70 degrees, there are some considerations in the butt rebound possibility of the tree or limb because its center weight of the falling stem attempts to find its center point. So the tree base tries to come behind the stump and can come into your escape area. Right here. Is it going to go up or down? Down, is it? And uh, could it go side to side? It could. It could roll off of this area. Yeah. So, uh, could it be back pressure? I'm up against that, aren't I? So that can close and get my I kind of use a rule of thumb. I use a notch and a hinge unless I can jump over it. If I can jump over it, you know, I might use an offset or something. But if I've got the possibility of it moving left or right real quick, I'm going to use a notch and a hinge to see if I can lower it down. So in that case, I need a notch in the top. I always cut the compression side first, no matter what kind of cut that I make. So you cut the compression side, then undercut to allow it to go down. And on this one, if this were a bigger tree, I'll show you a technique of using a lot of bigger trees. Is I bore cut through, use a bore cut again, set up my notch, bore cut through, cut down. So I'm not sitting here going like this, trying to cut up through this big oak or whatever's across the road. Because as soon as I cut through, something's going to move.
Why is that stopping right there? This. That looks like that part of my What do we call it? That was part of your face notch. You bypassed it. So that's a Dutchman. So see, now you, you've cut about two and a half inches back in there, and I don't know how far it goes back this way. You've got a little bit this way, not too bad, and you got about an inch down this way. So when that tree starts to go, this is going to close and something's got to give. When you start to cut your back cut, if you're not watching where this corner and that corner is, what's going to happen? You can cut your hinge off very, very quickly. There's a chance it can split. So, and plus, you, you know, when you, when you look at your direction, sometimes that'll, that'll change that a little bit too. Sometimes. All right, cut this off. What's holding that? So, what stopped it? It got over. This got over also is an issue with the depth consideration of the notch uh, into the tree or limb. And the farther you go into around. the tree, doesn't make the tree lean in the direction you want it to fall unless you have a very large base on the tree in relation to its back lean. You can't cut in far enough to change the back lean to forward on most trees. So, deeper the notch, the hinge will not hold the tree from breaking off into its back lean. A shallower notch can help to resist tearing the fiber off and losing the tree. You can illustrate this on a small sapling. Make a shallow notch into it. You can apply a lot of back pressure, but the hinge will hold from breaking back. If you go half into the stem, it's easy to pop the hinge off in the back lean direction. and you don't need for the control to be lost before the weight is committed to a forward movement. How deep into the tree should it be? If it's a back leaner, think about the tree or limb that is leaning opposite of where you plan to place it has to move far enough forward to commit the weight before the hinge is compromised. If a tree leans back three feet, it's likely to be a back lean of 10 degrees. If you have a notch of 30 degrees open, the tree will only be 20 degrees a foot or so forward when the hinge is broken or at least weakened. This doesn't give much hope for a side leaning tree to stay on target during the fall. I hope this makes sense to you. Thanks for traveling with us along this episode of Along the Forest Apps Road. I hope you're able to pick up something to think about and possibly use in your next chainsawing. You know, there's a lot of different things that we learn by the seat of our pants, and experience is the best teacher. But when we sit back and we think about how things work, it makes it much easier to be able to apply them in our work and also be able to make it better in the future. Think through this. We hope to see you along the Forest Apps Road. Good sawing. <laughs>